Hello, my name is Matt Max. In this episode, I will not be jumping into different costumes. I'm sorry, but there are just too many people involved in what I will talk about today that I just don't have enough costumes. You have to keep in mind that science is a work of generations of scientists building on all the stuff that generations of scientists before them have found out. It's not the work of the single scientists. When, when Einstein discovered his series of relativity, both the special and the general one, he was building upon the work of Riemann. And Riemann was building upon the work of Euler. It's never just the work of a single scientist. Uh, Newton said, if I have seen farther, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So all the stuff I talk about on today's episode involves so many people, I don't have enough costumes. In the last episode, we talked about how the theory of the Big Bang was born and how people like Wilson, Pantheas, Hubble proved that the theory of the Big Bang is true. But how the, actually did all of this around us form? Especially all of the elements in the universe. How did hydrogen form? How did helium form? Where did it all come from? Because not all of it came from the Big Bang. I realize that some of you may hate this, or maybe actually have never seen this periodic system of the elements. Don't run away. I will explain everything you need to know, and it's not a lot that you need to know to understand what I'm talking about. Every square, you cannot read it, but it doesn't matter. Every square here is one element. Okay, and the difference between all the elements is the number of protons those elements have in their core. Okay, elements consist of a core and electrons surrounding them. We will not talk about the electrons at all. We will only talk about the cores. Cores of atoms, so-called nuclei can consist of two different particles, okay? They can either have protons in red or neutrons in white, right? Either protons or neutrons, that's all. That's all. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons have a neutral charge. The number assigned to all the elements is the number of protons in their core. So, hydrogen, number one, one proton. Helium, number two, two proton. Lithium, number three, three protons. Um, francium, number 87, 87 protons, okay? Simple, right? That's all you need to know about atoms for what I, what I talk about today. So, here is an interesting fact. Only elements 1 to 4 were created in the Big Bang. This, 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 and this. Everything down here, all of this, and all of this, wasn't created in the Big Bang. Why? How do we know this? Well, we know one thing. We know there is an upper temperature you need to even have protons and neutrons. We know because we have particle accelerators that have enough energy. We know if you smash atoms together with enough energy, you stop having protons and neutrons. They break apart into what is called a quark-gluon plasma, which we don't have to understand. But we have to understand there is a top temperature for particles like this to even exist. So we know, we know the time, it's about two minutes, when we first get protons and neutrons. Now, we had a high temperature, that means we had those protons and neutrons flying around with a high speed, okay, high temperature, high speed. <coughs> And they were colliding with each other. And if a proton collides with a neutron, 
at a really high speed, or if two nuclei collide at a really high speed, there is a process called nuclear fusion. They stick to each other, they bond with each other. Okay, because they actually, they actually really like each other. They just don't know yet, okay? You have to shoot them at each other with like really high speed so that they know that they like each other and stick together. So this right here, this nuclei containing, uh, consisting of one proton and one neutron, right, was originally like this, a neutron flying towards a proton, or a proton flying towards a neutron at a high enough speed, colliding with each other, then you get nuclear fusion magic, right, and you get this. Okay, you get this. One proton, one neutron. Now, one proton and one unit, uh, one neutron. That's still one proton, okay? So, what, what did we learn? So, the number of protons is the only thing that matters. So, one proton, one neutron is still number one. It's still hydrogen. But one proton and one neutron is different from one proton. That is why we call this an isotope. We call it an isotope. It is still hydrogen, okay? It's still the element hydrogen, but it's an isotope of the element hydrogen. And because it's so important, we give it a name. We call this one proton, one neutron. We call this deuterium, okay? Now, what happens if you have two deuterium nuclei flying towards each other at a really high speed? Well, we get nuclear fusion. We get nuclear fusion, right? This collides with this, we get nuclear fusion, and we get this. Two protons, two neutrons. Two protons, that means it's no longer hydrogen, okay? Because it, it has no longer only one proton, it has two. And if you look at this table, if you search for two, oh well, okay, it's helium. It's another element. We just formed another element. This happened after the Big Bang, right? Because we had neutrons and protons flying around, and whenever you have neutrons and protons flying around at a high enough speed, colliding with enough, enough force, they suddenly encounter a man. I really like this other particle, and they form bigger and bigger nuclei. Until they hit a brick wall at number four or five. And I will not start to draw it, because it will include a lot of circles and it will not help. But the important thing is we only get to beryllium or maybe to boron, to four or maybe to number five after the Big Bang. Why? Well, to get carbon, number six, we need three particles. And we not only need three particles, we need three particles at the right place, at the right time, flying with the right speed in the right direction. Why do we need three particles? You're now sitting there, right? You're now sitting there, you're looking at your periodic system of the elements, obviously, right? And you're like, okay, helium is two, beryllium is four, two plus four is six, carbon is six. We can just use beryllium and helium and let it collide and we get carbon, right? Yes, but beryllium with four neutrons and four protons, which you need, is highly unstable. So yeah, if two helium atoms collide, you get beryllium all right, but it disappears. So you really need three helium atoms at the right time, at the right place, flying in the right direction with the right speed to be at the correct correct uh, place at the correct time so that two can collide and form beryllium and then the third one comes right at the beryllium is formed third one comes and then you get uh, carbon now this can happen all the time but it's just really unlikely and because it's so unlikely it takes a long time to happen it takes ten thousands of years now 
the universe, meanwhile, while all of this was happening, was expanding still. It was expanding, and while it was expanding, the temperature was going down. Okay? Expansion, temperature goes down. Compression, temperature goes up. Like, with an air pump, if you pump up your bicycle tire, it gets hot, because you compress the gas. And if you refill a lighter, if you have a container to refill your lighter, the container gets cold, and it even has ice at the top because it gets cold. Expansion, temperature goes down. So, at the time, uh, after those 10,000 years, it was way too cold to, to even allow fusion anymore. The speed of the particles was not high enough, right? Because particle speed, nothing else than temperature. Temperature, nothing else than kinetic energy. The speed of the particles was not high enough to allow fusion anymore. Damn, right? So we understand where 1 to 4, maybe to 5 come from. But what's with all of this, right? Because that's kind of that's kinda important. I mean, this table I, we need carbon, we need oxygen. Our blood is red. Why is our blood red? Because it contains iron. Most likely, like this pen too, it also contains iron. That's aluminum. Let me not even start to talk about what you need to make microprocessors, okay? Where does all of this come from? When it didn't come from the Big Bang? The answer to this is what Neil deGrasse Tyson calls the most astonishing fact. Everything? All this matter, you, me, this table, all of this comes from stars. Every single atom, heavier than beryllium, maybe boron, every iron, gold, silver, calcium, francium, oxygen, copper atom, ever in the whole universe, all of this comes from stars, without exception, every single atom. We are all made out of star stuff. My name is Mad Max. Tune in next time, when I will continue the story and explain how all of those heavy elements are formed in stars like our sun. <laughs>